Hello everyone, welcome to week four. By now, you should have a solid understanding of algorithm efficiency analysis. Whenever you are asked to design an algorithm, you want to make sure that first, the algorithm is correct, and second, the algorithm is efficient. What we learned in the first three weeks help us to formally compute the time complexity of an algorithm. It gives us an estimation on how efficient an algorithm is. Starting from this week, we're going to learn four different algorithmic paradigms. So these are the most common strategies that people use when they are designing an algorithmic solution to a problem. We will learn these four algorithmic paradigms using case studies. Okay, let's start with the first algorithmic paradigm, divide and conquer. Starting from this lecture, we will be spending two weeks to discuss the second topic of the course, divide and conquer. We will start by introducing the general structure of divide and conquer strategy, and then we'll show you how to design a divide and conquer algorithm through case studies. In this first lecture, which is also a brief one, we formalize how divide and conquer works. Divide and conquer is in fact a strategy that can find very wide applications, both in computing and outside of computing. In politics, for instance, divide and rule is for emperors or people who rule to gain power by breaking up concentrations of power other individuals can have. We are also familiar with this example where for us to achieve a larger overall goal of a project, we break it down into more measurable objectives such that we can monitor the progress. In computing, divide and conquer helps us manage more complex problems. For instance, task T is comprised in some way of subtasks A, B, C, and D. Instead of solving task T as a whole, we can break it down to four subtasks and solve them one at a time. This makes subproblems more manageable and less overwhelming. We can often continue to break the task down to smaller and smaller pieces, finally arriving at subtasks that are simple enough to solve directly. For some problem, the complexity of solving it comes from the large size of its input. In this case, we can divide a problem instance into halves each time and can continue dividing it until we reach a base level where the inputs are small enough to be solved directly. This is the case we'll be discussing in this course. Now we see how divide and conquer algorithmic paradigm can be formalized. In order to solve a problem of size n, we divide it into a number of subproblems and solve them recursively. Once the subproblems become small enough that we no longer recurse, we say that the recursion bottoms out and that we have gotten down to the base cases. Once all the subproblems are solved, we combine the solution into the solution for the original problem. Subproblems are often smaller instances of the original problem, but can be sometimes not quite the same as the original problem. Up until this point, you should recall that there are indeed algorithms we learned before fall into the divide and conquer paradigm. Can you take a moment and list them? Now let's see some example divide and conquer algorithms together. The first one came to my mind is binary search. Here we have the pseudocode for binary search. We see there is the base case definition, the divide step, the conquer step using recursion. Note that we use n equal 4 as the base case here. In fact, this base case n size can be any small and specific value. Since now we know solving an input instance of a specified size only takes a constant time. If you recall, we also know the time complexity of binary search. This is the recurrence relation of binary search. Note that I use the big O of log n here. 
Since the actual running time of binary search depends on the input, we may finish the search in constant time if value t is the middle value of list A. We may spend the entire log n time if value t is not in list A. The second example is merge sort, which we also reviewed in this course. Here we have the base case defined with a small input size 3. Then we divide input list A into two equal halves and solve them by two recursive calls. Last, we merge the two sorted halves together. It is another classic example of divide and conquer. Please also recall the complexity of merge sort, which we computed using substitution method. Note that we use the notation theta here. Since merge sort has the same running time for any input instance of the same size, it is of log n times n, comparing with just log n for binary search. The reason is that binary search has only one recursive call on half of the input in each iteration. Merge sort has two recursive calls on the two halves, so the recursion itself has a theta of n complexity. The merge operation, on the other hand, requires theta n complexity in each iteration. We have log n this many iterations since we are splitting halves each time, so the overall complexity of merge sort is theta n times log n. You may wonder what about dividing the list A into three equal sublists at a time? Does this help increase the time efficiency? First, what's the recurrence relation if we split in thirds at a time? It will be very similar to the binary splitting. We have a constant here, C2, that takes care of all the sequential instructions. And then we have C3 times N. So that's the merge. We have to go through all the elements. That's a linear time. And then we will have three recursive calls. And each of them will take the time N over 3. Please pause the video and take a moment so you can use substitution to derive the complexity of this algorithm. You should be able to see that the complexity is still in theta n log n. In other words, splitting in thirds or even quarters does not improve the time efficiency of merge sort. Another divide and conquer sorting algorithm is quicksort. If you recall, there are many different implementations of quicksort based on how a pivot value is chosen and how the input list A is partitioned. The worst case happens when the partition is the most uneven, that is, each time A is split into one element and n minus one elements. The time complexity is in theta n square. In the best case, each time A is split into two equal halves, so the recurrence relation looks the same as merge sort, and thus its complexity is theta n log n. Quick sort therefore bounces between n square and n log n, and we can use big O of n square to denote its complexity. We can give an upper bound. Using this example, we also see that divide and conquer works the most efficient when we can split an input instance into equal portions at a time. The more uneven this split is, the less efficient divide and conquer becomes. OK, this will be all for the first lecture. In the next two lectures this week, we will see two more interesting problems that can be solved using divide and conquer. Stay tuned.